started a religion. Some say he was a radical Jew. No doubt he taught us all by example what our conscience says we should do. Like we want to be treated ourselves is the way to treat our sister and brother. It's the key to human and civil rights. Yeah, in the sum of all that matters. Good evening, everyone. W welcome to Unity Matters Changes Made. And this is December 4th, 2012. So I'd like to wish you all a happy new year next year when we come on the show next year, but I'd like to introduce um, our um, host of the show, Albert Tercaso. Hey, before we go anywhere, hey, Chris, um, I got a little headache. You think since we got a doctor in the house, maybe I could get a prescription? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, just I get one too. I'm sorry. I don't have a headache yet. I just was saying that. Well, we want to officially welcome Dr. Fred Fowler. And uh, he is a doctor of education, and we need to give some state legislators and some industry <laughs> professionals and some so-called nonprofits and a few other people some education. Now, before we get into all that this, that, and the other, we're going to have a, a pretty um, informative entertainment and um, more of a lighter kind of a show tonight. And let's just say that uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah and Happy Kwanzaa for later in the month. And if Ramadan's around again, you know, I, I heard they moved it, so I'm not exactly sure when it happens. But if it's around, Happy Ramadan. And in the meantime, you know, I wanted to say we're going to have a little video, a couple videos later in the night. So pay close attention to what is said in that video because it is so important to spend the time doing what I ask you to do and the challenge that I give to you in these two videos. And we already have calls waiting, holy Moses. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little something something here first. Uh, I really don't have any announcements per se, except that I do want to say that as you know, the President Obama was reelected. I did work real hard to get him reelected. Asked you to shut my show off last month to help him get elected. And I am proud to say that he was reelected. And he ended up with 326, no, 300, I think it's 326 electoral college votes. I had made the prediction and had the hope that he would make more than that. And uh, that was, you know, 300 or more is what I'm trying to say. And actually it happened. Now I'm not gonna say I had anything to do with it, uh, but it was a good prediction. And also he did win the popular vote, which was pretty cool too. Um, but again, I did want him to win. I felt he was the best choice for America for now. But what's interesting is, here, I wanted you to vote for him, but later in the night, before all this is over, if I have time, I may be doing a little chastising of Congress and the president. So here, I want the guy in, but I still bow him out a little bit. I don't seem to give anybody a break, do I? But you know what? We can't give people breaks. You see, that before I get into anything, before I make an announcement, let me explain something to you about me. I don't give people a break. If you do wrong, I'm going to let you know. If I do wrong, I'm going to let me know. If I do wrong, you better let me know. Because if we don't work to improve things for ourselves and society and humanity, we're not going to get them improved. So you know what? Some people say I'm too tough. Well, you know what? Life is tough. People getting hurt, people getting killed, people getting locked up for stupid reasons. That's tough. So yeah, I can be a HA, 
That stands for hard something else with three letters. But in the meantime, let's get down to the, fun, the more fun and more important part of the episode. And a little bit later, we're going to have Annette say little hellos. So for now, Annette's just going to say hello to everybody out there if she wants to. Hello, everybody. How are you? Merry Christmas and everything related to the holidays, different religions and everything, and Happy New Year and a safe one always. And be safe driving to your destinations. We want you to get there safely and back home, and your relatives and friends, the same thing. And um, we're glad that you could tune in this evening. I hope you enjoy our show as always. And we hope that we help you the best way that we can with our show. So um, tune in to us and see what you think. All right, and I'm going to go right to Fred after one other quick announcement that I actually have an announcement I forgot about. So let's go ahead and take care of it. Um, my fellow Pittsburghers, my fellow Pennsylvanians, my fellow Americans, friends, family, fans, all of you who tune in, I thank you for tuning in. All of you who want to hear what I have to say, whether you agree with it or disagree with it, or you feel that there's a value, I want you to know you are missing vital information if the only thing you're able to do is watch this show. This show is only able to be filmed once a month for financial reasons and also time-consuming, studio time, what have you. So I'm only here once a month, but I have an online presence. It is vitally important that you start connecting with me online. Let me explain. You need to go to www.humanitymatters.org. You need to go to www.youtube.com slash user slash Albert Torcaso, and you need to look me up on Facebook and Twitter. There's a reason for that. There are a lot of things that I can do online that because of policy, I'm not allowed to tell you on this program. But it is something that can change your life in every way for the better. Now, there's even a possibility, a possibility of getting free information that, and I gotta be careful even saying this, Let's just say that you need to contact me because if you do, you may change your life in such a dramatic way that you won't recognize it in six months. Now, let me just say this. If you don't know how to get on the internet, go to the library. They will teach you, or you can even get a librarian to take you and do certain things. If you have family, if you have friends, have them teach you. Uh, we have these uh, iPhones now. We have smartphones now. We have other devices that can get you online. If you are homebound or you have a re relative that's homebound, help them. Because I am, at its core, I'm all about improving my life and improving the lives of others. And if you do not connect with me online, there are things I cannot tell you. It is not that I'm being cryptic. It is not that I'm being secret. By law, there are things I can't tell you. And I'm telling you, I have always said I want to improve your life, and I want to help you to get from the economic, economic bottom to the middle to higher up. I am in the process of starting to do that, but I'm not allowed to tell you anything about it. So get online, find me, email me, and if you do, your life can change for the better. That's all I'm going to say about it. Humanitymatters.org, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. With that, you know, we have an honor here today, but I'm going to actually defer the first question to Chris Weiss, the first couple questions. I, I suspect he probably has more than one. And then I will be asking Dr. Fowler a few questions and believe me, we will be opening up a lot of information and entertainment. And then right after the doctor is done answering the question, 
he's going to get caller number one. So what we're going to do, Chris, I'll tell you what, relegate yourself, limit yourself to one question so that he can give you a full answer. And then you, Dr. Uh, Fowler, Fred, Fred guess yes. what? You get to answer the call. Thanks. So you get to answer a question, then you get to answer more questions. Excellent. And then when you're done, you'll have more questions to answer. Ready to go. And then you know what happened to that one? You might have to now go ahead. And now back to Chris. Um, uh, Fred, um, when you were working with the county, did you really pay attention to the people that are being served and also the f families of people being served? Well, I'm not going to answer that as a yes or no question. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. And I think that during my career with Allegheny County, we were successful at changing the tenor of the system in a way that absolutely included listening to people in a way that we didn't previously. I can go into more detail. If you look at, for instance, the attendance at our annual plan every year and who would come to tell us what we needed to do, what was the right thing to do over the course of the time that I was working with the plan over a 10-year period. It went from providers coming in to uh, ask for money to having the people who were using our services and asking us for help to come in and tell us what people needed and what they wanted and what would help them. And so I feel very uh, gratified at, at being able to have some success with listening. But it's a hard thing for the system to do. All right, and some success. Some success. There's ways, there's still a long ways to go. Well, I found you to be one of the, and this is my own personal, well, you know what, it's not just my personal opinion, it happens to be true. I found you to be one of the more caring, receptive, caring people that I've met in the system. And I'm not trying to mm -hmm. make you feel unease or like we're, we're lifting you up somewhere you don't deserve to be lifted up. But I'm telling you, I met a lot of people in the system. Mm -hmm. All right. And I felt that a lot of them were, I wouldn't say condescending, but were listening due to the fact they were obligated legally. Mm -hmm. But they weren't really listening, they were just dealing with you. Whereas I always felt you at least listened. You may not have been able to do things, may not have necessarily agreed, but you listened. So Thank I you. give you props for that. But Thank I do you. believe that I did instruct you to, 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 to do something when Chris was done. So what was that that I asked you to do? I think you asked me to take a phone call. So what are you waiting on? Well, Fred, I got to tease you, you know? Come on, what, what's okay, going on here? I'm ready to go. Okay, well, don't tell me. Tell the caller that. I, I don't know. <laughs> Hello, caller? <laughs> tell you to do Hello, caller. Are you there? Uh-oh. Our caller went bye-bye. Okay. Wait a minute. Caller, are you there? Hello, caller. Uh -oh. no, nobody waiting for the Where's call. Our well, caller? maybe someone will call in. We lost our caller, man. Caller, we Hello? Were... No, you didn't. Oh, oh we got hello. our caller back. Okay. We, we were fishing and we lost it. Hi, Donna. Hi, guys. Wait a minute. Fred's supposed to answer the call. Wait, Donna. Let's start over Hi. again, Fred. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Fred. How are you? I'm great. <laughs> Is this the Donna that I think it is? Yeah. Okay. How are you? Honey. I call everybody honey. <laughs> <laughs> Even when you come to the house, you get called honey. How about that? How about that? That's something, ain't it? Okay. What's your question? Oh, I have no question. I always call an aggravate out, and he knows it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you did know that. But I have, you know, I have a, uh, um, what is it? Uh, Well, com I guess it's a, like a little comment type deal thing. That's a statement. And, you know, Go ahead. Some people get jealous because you have different things and they don't have it. Yeah. And it's like, right. wh what's there to get jealous of and why? Was Jesus and God jealous of anybody? No. I can't hear you. You're whispering. I'm not whispering. 
Well, it sounds like you guys are 15 million miles away. I, I think that your question's beyond my authority to answer. <laughs> yeah, you got him in trouble. He can't answer for JC. No, I didn't get him in trouble. No, I'm just saying. Why do people get jealous of other people? I don't know, but who's jealous? I'm not mentioning no names. Uh-oh. Not me, right? No. Why, are you jealous? No, I don't think so, but I wanted to know what I was jealous of. <laughs> well, do you, are you jealous because we have a six-room house? No. Okay, then. I mean, people act like, oh, my God, you got such a big house. Where do you put everybody at? Oh, uh-oh. I know what you mean. Ay, 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 ay. You have a solitary confinement. Uh oh, I like, know what you, know, you what, mean. What's it to be jealous of? And I have one thing to say. Okay, Thank let's you hear it. Thank for everybody that went on a trip on Saturday, and I hope everybody had a good time. And I have a big, long, well, not a big, long birthday list, but there's a birthday list that I have to say happy birthday to. Not and yet, you ain't. Hellos. Time out, time out. You're not allowed to say the birthday yet. You know why? Why? Because I want to make sure that my audience in Pittsburgh and in Pennsylvania and throughout the United States knows that next year I expect a haunted Gettysburg tour from a company that you will still remain nameless. But if you don't hook me up to see the ghost, I'm going to growl at you like a werewolf that never stops. You understand me, young lady? I want to see ghosts. I'm re oh, jeez, I forgot to record the damn thing. You better not have forgot Sorry. to record it's my show. Tomorrow. I'm calling the priest. Hey. No, uh, you can call the priest. I will. I'll call a minister, too. Okay. All That's right. Okay. Now, are we going to go to the ghost? I'm going to try my best. Some well, people you can do better. To to hey, there is Some people want to go to New York, so I don't know where we're going to end up at next We're year. not going to New York City until I see my ghost. I want to see ghosts. All right, then. Hey, if we go to New York and we don't see no ghosts, we're going, we're going to have to see some ghosts in New York. I want to see ghosts, America. Well, anyway, go ahead with your, your hurt. happy birthdays and hi, Stevie Cavendish, hi, Chucky Cavendish, hi, Miranda Cavendish, whatever. Who? I don't know. I made up the name. I'm sure you did. Miranda Cavendish, come on down. But if you want to see a ghost, the underneath the high-level bridge in Homestead, that train... That hold up, hold up. Railroad thing is haunted. Hold it's up. Ghost train. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I don't want to see a homestead ghost. I want Gettysburg ghost. Let's this get it recording. right, peoples. This is not recording. I pushed the record button. Well, push the record button. Would, would you please go with the, the um, hellos, please? Everybody in America knows what she's doing now. That's all right. Let them know. Everybody but me. <laughs> you don't know what I, she's doing? No, but she, but, but, but Donna, Donna, sweet Donna, you remi reminded me something that I neglected to do, and that is uh -oh. in response partly to your, uh, to my partner's question here. I want to s extend my sincere thanks to all of the people that talked to me, all of the people who did talk to me. Right. You can give me credit for listening, but... That's not really where the credit is. That's the, that's the, that's that's the easy part. The harder part is, is the courage talking and that's coming true. out to some bureaucrat with a coat and a tie. Why should you trust me, right? I'm from the government. I'm here to help. Yeah. Okay. You got a point. Uh, so thank you and continued thank you to everyone who helps us to do the right thing. And when I say us, I mean the publicly funded system that I work in. Okay. All right, well now I guess we'll get to the hellos and then she'll pick on me again. Okay. You know, it's not easy being a talk show host either, right? I'm sure it's not. You know what? They might think I'm from the government because I wear a suit. <laughs> I'm not from the government. Yeah. Donna May. Hello. Okay. It's You're on live television. Let's snap it up. Start going. Go out to the Olsen family, Riggins family, Rogers family, the Coles family. Happy birthday to RJ, Brianna, John, Jason Jr., Eddie, Sean, er Ernie. Hello to Timmy, Tony, Jimmy, Lance, Steve, John, Kara, Nicole. Happy birthday to Kim. Hello to Aaron and Ted. And see, I mentioned female names. That's something I usually don't do. Yeah, I noticed that. And happy birthday to RJ. You don't want to forget him again. And also happy I'm birthday to Fred Fowler. You never even seen him the first time. <laughs> what? 
You said you, you never seen him. Or you I didn't say that. I said, let's not forget him. The first time. I said, I, let's not forget him. Open your ears, young lady. Like I said, it's hard to hear you. Hello. 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 <laughs> Don't argue with me on live television. Do you think the audience wants to hear this kind of stuff? Oh, my gosh. And happy birthday to Fred Fowler. Thank you very much. Happy birthday, Fred, honey. I hope you enjoy your birthday, honey. Well, thanks. Happy birthday, Don. <laughs> and happy solstice, everyone. There you go. This time, let it be the last day. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a joke. We're getting there. No, no, okay. Oh, happy my. Happy New Year to everybody watching and all over the world. All right, well. Stay safe. What's next, Donna? What's on the agenda? Because i got to start moving forward. You know me. That's all. I, I want to ask you a question, but I'm going to wait until you're not on the air. Yeah, ask me a I question. You, I don't want you getting in trouble. All right. Well, I kind of almost did when I kept telling people to go to humanitymatters.org. But look, if they want to change their lives, they got to check it out. I can't lie about it. I'm not allowed to tell them what I'm not allowed to tell them. But if they go certain places, they might learn something they may not allowed to learn. What can I say? I want to save lives. So, hey, forget about it. I got to risk what I got to risk. All right, well, forget about it. Forget about it here. Forget about it here. Mm, good night. Yeah, I'll talk yeah. to you guys later. God bless you and oh, good night. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're doing. <laughs> hey, you. You to do that again? Hey, you're yeah, going to no, get it. it right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> hey, behave yourself. You. I mm. see you pointing your finger at me. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, good night, everybody. Mm, another way, baby. <laughs> you smack you. We're doing live television, peoples. I got to talk to the doctor, you know. Oh, gosh. Somebody going to give me a headache. All right, now I lost my thought of train. You know, this happy birthday on purpose. Remember, everybody always says, I lost my train of thought? Yeah. I said, I lost my thought of train. <laughs> I got to do things a little bit differently, right? Okay. You did things differently, didn't you? I tried. All right. I always now, try. Let me... Um, Get down to the gritty nitty, as they say. Give me a very specific example of what you and your team started to do when you very first made the started to initiate initially initiate the changes when you first started. Uh, I guess like 30 years ago or whatever. Give us a little bit of a Biography or, or um, not a biography, but let me let me change of, yeah change let me of, let me, let me approach of, it very very quickly first just very quickly thumbnail sketch of personal That's what I'm personal stuff at. and how I got to come to the county here and then All right. address the issue from a more that institutional point of view perhaps or systems point of view mm -hmm. you know I. Um, wanted to work in a way that I wasn't spending my time making somebody else wealthy and I right. fell into the business of taking care of children that were in a long-term psychiatric facility and uh, through a friend and uh, I fell into the work, I loved it and pursued education then beyond that to try and be more effective and um, got into the business from the point of view of trying to be a what we call provider sometimes or someone mm -hmm. who would try and help people that were asking for help. And I worked in a whole variety of settings, okay. uh, inpatient settings uh, a lot, in hospitals, in long-term residential settings. I worked a lot with children and adolescents. And back in the early 1970s when I got into this business, we made every mistake that you could possibly make uh, with the families and the children that were in our care. And I learned a lot from those mistakes. Um, pursuing education then, uh, I did eventually uh, get into a middle management, the muddle of middle management as they call it. You're between the devil and the deep blue sea, pardon the expression, um, on the one hand with the clinical responsibilities of managing uh, people asking for help and on the other hand trying to satisfy the demands of the ever increasing uh, bureaucratization of the business that we were about and um, 
had a decision to make whether to pursue administrative work or to pursue clinical work and chose administrative work as a way to have a broader influence over mm -hmm. a greater number of people. At that time, again, working mostly with children and families and having my primary clinical expertise in diagnostic uh, science with adolescents in particular, um, I learned a lot about how all the different big publicly funded systems uh, didn't work together and was very aware of that problem when the federal government said, gee, we're under a lot of pressure to do something. I won't go without, unless you want to go into a lot of detail, there was a very famous book called uh, Unclaimed Children, The Failure of Public Responsibility to Children with Serious Emotional Disturbance. Okay. That was published in 1982 by the Children's Defense Fund, authored by Dr. Jane Nitzer, and that opened a lot of eyes. There had been previous presidential commissions under Jimmy Carter uh, and didn't get a lot of action, but uh, Professor Nitzer's book got a lot of attention. Uh, it was followed by a hue and cry to improve the lives and the lot of children and their families. And the federal government invented something called the Child and Adolescent Service System Program to pump money into state governments that now were largely responsible for publicly funded at that time we called mental health systems, okay. and to, to uh, make change agents and to uh, have all of the states in the country develop a infrastructure in the state government to specifically address the needs of children and their families. Okay. And part of that was built on the foundation of bringing all of the disparate systems, uh, families, schools, the mental health system, Mm -hmm. juvenile probation, uh, juvenile justice, uh, the intellectual developmental disabilities community, to bring mm -hmm. all of these f different and disparate people with different backgrounds and different philosophies together mm -hmm. all around the table to talk in the best interest of a family and sense. a child. And it was very, very difficult. Some would say in ch in a challenging, impossible work right. to do. Uh, but we did it, and we uh, were very successful, I believe, here locally and nationally. The, the program still, um, you know, is recognized. I think that the acronym CASP will be known still across the country. And the principal technology that was invented was simply uh, sitting down at the table with the family and sense. everybody being honest about what they were doing. Okay. and uh, became known as an interagency meeting in the lingo. Uh, but that was the primary technology that came out of all of those federal dollars. Uh, and we were successful at receiving a grant to uh, implement that in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, and so I, I joined the uh, bureaucracy to operate that program because I knew that it was what was needed. Right. Well, we'll get back to that now. We do have another call, so I think we'll have a net answer to that. And then after the call, we'll go into the tape roll immediately after we end the call. And then when we come back, I uh, need to ask you how your university education, because you say you're a doctor mm -hmm. of education, Correct. and yet somehow you were dealing with different many different jobs, even in the job that you work with the county. Yeah. And it's, it seems to me, it almost seems like how could the, the education you got at the university actually qualify and relate you to the jobs that you had? So okay. I would like to hear the That's take on question. that. But let's go ahead and have Annette get this call. And hopefully it will be for the doctor, Dr. Fred Fowler. Hello? Hello. Yeah, wait, hi, wait, wait. Diane. You must wait. No, this is a question for the. Oh, I'm glad you got my tear cut and that I can see it. I, I did it. Okay. Now, I want to know more about this doctor. Are your doctor worked in a hospital or a, a, a high school or something, or your principal doctor or something? Let's hear <laughs> him talk about more about himself. 
Okay. I want to hear him because I heard nothing about him. Okay, I'm happy to talk about that. Hey, I, I want to I hear all about you. Okay. I know what my brother does for a living. He sits there and does his talk show. I want to hear about you. Okay. Who well, she did? I'm, I'm happy and to happy, tell you. Happy holidays. Happy nice holidays. Happy holidays. I don't to even too. know Thank his you. name. Thank I you very much. Name today. Yeah, as I, as I was describing, I, I was looking for you know a way to make a living that was not um, going to make somebody else rich. So I discovered that well, I, could, I could make a living oh, trying to be helpful to other people, and I wasn't going to make any money, but I could do something that was okay with my ethics, and I ended up in the behavioral health or the mental health business, and uh, kind of by accident. But I worked in a hospital with children and adolescents for the first year in Florida. It was in Florida. It was a long term. Uh, the kids lived there. In fact, some of the kids grew up there, and they stayed there for a long time. I stayed there for a year. Then I went back to school, and uh, after that, I have worked in uh, special school settings for children who had uh, particular special educational needs. Um, we understood those children at that time to have autism. Things have changed a little bit since then. That was in the early 70s also. Uh, I worked in a, um, a couple of different hospitals with adult persons in Florida and um, was you know, kind of direct line, what we called a milieu therapist. But because it was Miami, we called it a mildew therapist. But oh my. as it may. Uh, it was just a, a, an opportunity to try and keep order in the unit and to try and be helpful to people and be available. And it was a very great learning experience. I was exposed to very many brilliant uh, minds. The psychiatry uh, community was a very strong influence in my upbringing and in my education. Um, and um, I moved from inpatient units then on to a community mental health center here in Allegheny County. Uh, my sweetie, my, uh, my partner, had previously worked in community mental health, and I knew something about it. I'd been following it since the early 70s. It's early advent here in this area, and uh, I was lucky enough to uh, have that opportunity to join the county workforce to, to work with that CASP project to try and make things better for children and families. I did that for 10 years and then moved to a position with the county uh, responsible for developing our annual plans uh, for mental health services and uh, substance abuse services uh, for the next 12 years. Um, and so I was working in a downtown office and um, primarily working with other professional persons. Right. Uh, but as much as I could, I would get away from professionals and, and work with people that were here to, to ask us for help so that we really were trying, I was trying to learn what we really needed to do. Right. Uh, and of course, I've always been a believer in science and reading the literature and, and you know, I'll answer uh, Mr. Tecaster's question about that uh, tie-in to my academic background uh, when that's convenient. Uh, do you have any more specific questions about who I am or where I come from? Oh yeah, you can tell us where you came from. Well, I personally... Are you from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, or are you from Florida? No, in fact, I was born in Salt Lake City, Utah. Okay. Uh-oh, uh -oh, where I, the Normans live. That's correct. <laughs> that is very correct. Well, do you know the Normans? I do indeed, yes. And oh, I, lived there boy, you, you, I lived there for 12 years. I'm getting into that. Dine letter. Let yeah, I, grew up, I grew up in Utah. Okay. And then I moved oh, okay. Did you say hi to Marie and Donnie Osmond? <laughs> oh, she's well, silly. they weren't they weren't on the planet when I lived there. Okay. There were there, Marie Osmond's fifty three years old. Are you? Uh, well, I've got a few years on Marie. <laughs> I just I watch her show all the time. Okay. Well, well Diane, well, we're going to go ahead and it. move forward and let the doctor. Well, have you been back it. home lately in Utah? No, not for a long time. I don't know that that's home. I think I think he, I think Pittsburgh's home now. Pittsburgh's oh. home, he said. Diane. Pittsburgh's his home. Yeah. I heard you. Have a good holiday. Uh, what's his name again? <laughs> Fred. 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 Just call me Fred. Diane. Just call him Fred. Fred. All, All right. right. Have, have a, a good holiday and you and your family. Thank All you right. so much. You too. We'll talk to you that, later, And wear Diane. that seatbelt, because I know he's going to say it. Wear that seatbelt. Yeah, that's true. He does. 
He definitely does. All right, bye. Thanks. Okay. You know, and I just have to explain that before we go into the tape rule. Um, she said for you to wear your seatbelt, and then I commented that he does. Yes. That's because over the years I've talked to you, and and you and you told me a couple of things, so I know that you happen to wear it, and that's a good thing. And I not only I, I not only wear my seatbelt, I make everyone in the car wear their seatbelt. I seat think that's belt. great. Is I that do true, too. Chris? That's yeah. true. Yeah. Okay. As a matter of fact, Donna, Donna, yeah, I'm talking to you, Donna W. Um, she'll always say to me. He always makes me wear the seatbelt. I'm tired of this dang thing. And then <laughs> Kathy cracks me up. She's like, you in this dang seatbelt. It's choking me. It's choking me. It's like, well, it's going to save your life if you ever need it. So wear the freaking seatbelt. So that's right, ladies and gentlemen. I am the real guy you see here on TV. If you're in my vehicle, you will be wearing a seatbelt. You don't want to wear a seatbelt? Guess what? You're going to be in trouble. There's only one person who doesn't have to wear a seatbelt in my vehicle, and that's because of a medical condition, and he's right here next to Fred. His name is Chris Weiss. He's the only one, and at some point, one of these days, he'll be wearing it too. If you're in my vehicle, you will wear a seatbelt. Simple as that. I got my reasons, ladies and gentlemen. But with that, let's go ahead and show clip number one. We're running out of daylight, well, nighttime. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the live show. Well, it's December the 3rd, and I got a challenge for you. You may have noticed in the background I'm at a playground. And in this case, I will let you know where it is. It's in Shenley Park, in the Commonwealth State of Pennsylvania, in the city of Pittsburgh, in the neighborhood of Oakland. It's called Shenley Park, and it's a playground. And there are some people in the background, you may not see them, that have brought their children here to have fun at the playground. So why am I here today? Well, I'm here a day before we do the live show. I came here yesterday, it will be yesterday when you see this, to talk about something that's very important. Fun, pure fun and happiness. And I wanna give you two challenges this month and Kwanzaa month and possibly other holidays. I wanna ask you a question. When's the last time you took two hours out of your life just to have fun, pleasure, relaxation, or meditation? I want to challenge you this month to take at least two hours of your life and try to have unadulterated fun. We're here on location in Shenley Park in the Commonwealth State of Pennsylvania, in the city of Pittsburgh, in the neighborhood of Oakland. And right here in the background, I'm at a playground and there are some people around here playing with their children and their children having fun. And I need to ask you a question. When's the last time you actually had fun? Now, obviously we're adults, right? So we're not gonna be getting on slides and stuff. But whatever it is that is pure fun to you, that makes you happy, I want you to concentrate on it this month and every month, really. And spend some time for yourself. I know we get bogged down in stress, we get bogged down in financial worry. I know that we get bogged down in, you know, daily life or we have kids or whatever it is. There's a billion reasons why we don't take time for ourselves. And maybe sometimes when we get online, we're even overstressed because it's like we feel obligated to answer our Facebook or our email or whatever it is. Well, it's time to think about what really makes you have fun. So that's challenge number one. Two hours of fun for you this month. And try to make two hours every month. And then try to have two hours of fun for your children. Or set aside two hours of fun for your husband, your wife, whomever it is. And if you don't wanna have what they call traditional fun, what about what makes you happy? Try to work on pure happiness. That's the challenge for you this month and really every month. Now the second part is, 
what can you do to provide fun or happiness for someone who may not otherwise have it? Maybe disadvantaged adults, middle-aged, seniors, children, maybe providing time to take somebody out, maybe taking them to a movie, maybe taking them shopping, whatever it is. What can you do to increase a person's ability to have fun and happiness? The doctor, um, I mean, asked Fred how he transitioned in terms of academia and, and the extra training that he did. But we do have a call, so let's go ahead and let's have Chris get this call real quickly, which will probably be questions for you. And then hopefully we'll get to that. But I do need to get reality time in there. So if we miss something, we have something called a podcast that we have no time limit on. So. We won't miss anything. We'll get you. You're already a TV star. We'll have you a podcast star. You'll have so many stars on you, you'll be like a movie star. Okay. All right. How's that sound? You okay with a podcast? Okay. You okay, you okay with being a star? Let's get a Fred shout out. Go Fred! Go Fred! Go, Go Fred! Go Fred! Okay. How you doing, Cole? Chris? Good, caller. Go ahead. Happy, happy holiday. Call are you there? Yeah, I'm here. How are you doing, Glenn? Yeah, I'm Glenn. This is Glenn. I'm calling to tell y'all I'm still on y'all team. That's good. I'm still hanging with y'all. That sounds good there, Glenn. Because I miss y'all, but I'm, I'm still with y'all. Okay, that's good. What do you have to say to Fred, Glenn? What I have to say is you got a good program going on, and keep it going. I will. How's Mom doing? Glenn, how's your mother doing? Oh, my mother, she's, uh, she, she's been sick lately. That's why I've been calling. My mother's been sick lately. Oh, I hope she gets better soon. Take care of her, Glenn. Okay, I will. Okay, one of my favorite freedom fighters. That's right. What do you have to say to, to Fred? Fred, Glenn, do you have a question for Fred? Uh, a question? No, I have a question. I just, I just, I just, want, him, I just want to give us a good word. Okay, that's a good one. Thank you, Glenn. You too. Well, Glenn, you take care of yourself okay. and, 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 and you're still my buddy, too. I ain't forgot you, neither. It's nice to hear from you. I'm glad to hear from you, Glenn. And, and, I, still, and I still remember the, 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 the girl, too. I forgot her name. <laughs> well, you know, we're fr you know, I'll tell you what, Glenn. A lot of people think that I get tough on these shows, but I'm fighting for every one of us. And I'm fighting for you, Glenn. I want you to know I'm fighting for you. And you keep fighting for me because I, I need help, too. I'm fighting for you, too. I know, and I need that. I definitely need that. Okay, I was, I was calling to say that, but you know, I'm still with y'all. I still keep up the faith. All right, well, keep the faith and give me a call sometime. <laughs> Don't forget to call me up sometime, Glenn. Well, give me, yeah, give me your number. I'll do that, but I can't do it over the, on the TV, Glenn. But we're going to go ahead and um, move okay. ahead. So you have a okay, nice have night. A you have a nice night. Have a nice day. All right. God bless See you. Glenn. Have a good Christmas.
Um, let's see. I'm Before gonna, we, I want to put that there because yeah. it, it helps me to to re introduce my answer to your question. Okay. Well, what I want to do is I want to make sure we have some time for real reality time. So while okay. we do this, real quickly, have you? Well, not real quickly, but uh, why don't you? Well, first of all, put it up here a little bit more so it doesn't fall and get broken. Yeah, yeah, we fine. don't want anything broken we're here. Fine. Wait a minute, I don't see it on the camera. Uh, go the other way. There we go, Steelers. That works. Hey, I'm always giving a shout out to the Pittsburgh okay. Steelers. Sorry, other teams out there in America. What can I say? <laughs> all right. Okay. Tell us a little bit uh, about that. All right. So I'm working in the mental health business for right. a long time, and I work into middle management, right. and I'm responsible for implementing policy decisions right. and sometimes developing policy decisions. To, uh, what are we supposed to do? We really, you know, without going into a lot of detail, don't have right. a real clear idea in behavioral health sometimes what right. it is that we should do. And so I began to, as always, I, you know, I'm a good student of the literature and reading the psychiatric journals. And right. over the years, the psychiatric journals became more and more sophisticated methodologically. In my earlier days, I used to take a journal article home that I was excited about, and my wife, who's trained in clinical psychology and research mm -hmm. methodology, would just tear it to shreds. Oh, my. And because um, psychology was doing so much better research than psychiatry at the time. Okay. Eventually, psychiatry got much more sophisticated, but they began to narrow the kinds of questions that they asked, particularly in America, became much more biologically oriented. And while basic science and especially the scientific advances we've made by crossing different branches of science, neuroscience and genetics, and you know, the, these are tremendous advances, but sometimes the research was not helpful to me in trying to develop intelligent right. policy. Right. Uh, so I went back to the university Late, later in my career to try and find out, not so much did the academics know something about how to answer questions, right. but did they know something about how to better ask questions? Right, that makes sense. And, and so I went back, not so much with the intention of gaining the doctorate, but with trying to learn whether the people could teach me how to better ask questions. Right. And I discovered something I call naturalistic research uh, and anthropological methodology, and uh, so I, I attained my degree, my concentration in um, policy studies, uh, planning, and program evaluation in uh, the Department of Administrative and Policy Studies at the Graduate School of Education. And that allowed me Which to, Graduate School of Education? The Graduate School of Education is one of the graduate schools in the University of Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. Very large. Uh, school with many different divisions. Okay, so this you did actually come back to Pittsburgh and do that then? Well, I was in Pittsburgh, okay. um, but I was interested in whether the academics right. could teach me right. something, and, and, and right. they certainly did, and so uh, I, I used that research methodology to develop my own studies. Okay. I did a 10-year study of policy. I did a policy analysis of school-based mental health services okay. in Pennsylvania. Well, that's pretty cool. And, uh, that was... Uh, finished in 1997, a long time ago, and, right. um, you know, where do we go from here? There are a lot of, a lot of things that are uh, going to be interesting and bear the watching of all of us good people. This I brought because it ties up the end of my answer, and it was given to me. It's a great privilege to have received it from Let Our Voices Be Heard, an organization of people who have come to us in the government to ask us to help them and to be willing to devote their time, volunteer time, uh, to, to talk to me and other people and, and to tell us what are the right things to do. And they right. honored me by recognizing my willingness to listen. And yeah, to be and there that's a big thing. And, and uh, presented me with this with this honorarium uh, that I proudly show you and share with you all tonight. It's a and beautiful they, and handmade. It's a beautiful handmade clock that I display right. proudly in my Can we have a close-up picture of the clock, please? Because um, so this way you could uh, be able to... I don't believe we are going to be able to do that at this time. Mm -hmm. That's the best shot we're going to have. It's beautiful. Uh, but it is a beautiful clock. 
It's all handmade. It was by a consumer Here it is. who, I might add, probably, oh, yeah. in order to be a consumer, you have mental health, of some kind of mental health. Uh, 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 Fred, am I correct that you have some kind of mental health diagnosis when you're considered a consumer? Is that usually right? Well, I, you know, I... The reason why I'm asking is because... I guess. I want to point that out yeah. because, you know, so often people with mental health... Um, recovery challenges or, yes. or recovery mm -hmm. is stigmatized. We know this. Yes. And frequently, especially in other media, they're terror, they're terror, um, stigmatized in a terrible way. Yes. So this is a very complex thing to make. This is not something that anybody just can make. No, and the fact true. that it it's is made by somebody who has some mental health recovery you know, that's a, that's a success, yeah. that's an accomplishment, and that's why I point that out. Yeah. Sometimes we have to point out somebody has what is known as an illness or a challenge, and we have to exploit that in the sense that we need to let people, that in reality they shouldn't be exploited. Al, you know. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. You have to mention it up because people I, see you in a different light. Yes. And, and you that's know, not the way we yeah, should be seeing you, you know better than I, this is your show. Right. It's humanity. We're exactly. all the same. Exactly. We're all the same. The differences between us are very, very yeah, tiny exactly. when you look at how much we share. Well, the biggest thing, in the, and I agree with you 100%, the biggest thing about what you can learn from all my shows is that I don't care who you are, what you look like, what you wear, what illness you have, what illness you don't have. Uh, every one of us matter. And even people... Quite frankly, you may hate matter. And yeah, I know I come on my soapbox, it seems like. But it's the truth. But this is very this is a very big accomplishment for somebody who we don't know what their circumstances are. And I will tell you something about me. I got five minutes left. I gotta get my real time in, but I will quickly tell you something about me. I was misdiagnosed in my life in terms of my educational career mm -hmm. uh, because I was physically abused. Every day I would go to school. So I quit going to school. But because of that, I was misdiagnosed and labeled something that I never was hmm. because I didn't attend school. So they, they didn't deal with it correctly, didn't okay? And so the point is we can have titles. We can have quote unquote illnesses, but we are not that illness. And this is an accomplishment. And I right. personally think that this is something the clock, if we can get a picture of the clock instead of me talking this time, would be it great. Did, it did, it did okay, well, thank you for getting that. But that's an accomplishment. But, you know, I do need to change gears. I only have about three minutes, and Chris to has to get something To talk about reality time. Okay, let me get in there real quick. And i got to do a real quick reality time. This is totally off the su uh, subject. We're not going to have enough time. But real fast, I want to say something about the assessment situation in Pittsburgh and Allegheny County. I personally own a home that has been assessed by over, they raised my assessments by over $50,000. Now let me tell you something. The worst part of it wasn't that they assessed me incorrectly. The worst part was they claimed that my actual yard, which is very, very small plot, had gone up in value of $20 thousand dollars. They say that my yard is worth thirty-four thousand dollars. For the record, America, Pittsburgh, PA, politicians, county, mayor, Allegheny County, Chief Executive, Rich Fitzgerald, uh, Governor Corbett, I'm I will be calling you. I promise you I will be calling you because they raised my yard um, up to twenty thousand dollars. They claimed that it was fourteen thousand dollars and it went up to thirty four thousand. Now America, I don't know who did these assessments in Pittsburgh, in America, whatever, but I think they were taking illegal drugs when they did it. Let me explain. My yard in the back, and I'm not trying to be cruel, my yard in the back has an excess, excessive amount of trees from a abandoned property, so there's no sun that gets in my yard. What we get in the summer is essentially mud. I can't even grow one flower. And the assessment people decided my yard, they can't grow anything, is worth $34,000. So let me just tell you, 
what's going to happen. I want Pittsburgh government officials in Allegheny County to know you are going to hear from me, and we are going to fix this. I will not pay $76,000 on my home. I will not accept it. What can I do about it? You may have the official structural power. What I can do about it is I will take it to every legal outlet I can, and if I have to get on every media network throughout this city, I will do it. That's what I can do about it. I am not going to pay for a yard that is garbage. I'm sorry. I'm not going to do it. So either you fix these assessments for me and for the thousands of Pittsburghers and Allegheny County residents, and you're not going to kill people off and make them lose their houses and go homeless, because I'm here to let you know that come January, I'm going to have more than two minutes to talk about this. And let me tell you, fix this before January or expect the wrath of Turcaso, and it won't be a pretty sight. You think I was tough on the politicians for election? I guarantee you I'll be a million times worse. A million times worse. Fix it. Chris, you got about 20 seconds. It's not fair. Start speaking. You got uh, 20 one, seconds. One thing I want to mention is about uh, several Look days. Look into the camera, not the at me. days of action is That's tomorrow me. at the city county building, people can speak up about the assessment because the UPMC is, is uh, public hearings at 5 p.m. City County building. They, the, the UPMC wants to get out of paying their fair share of taxes. So we need to speak up at that public hearing. And that's December the 5th. Where is it? Give me a location quickly. City County building. City County building. Well, give me an address. You got any address? No. All right. Pittsburgh City County building. Get there. December Grant the 5th. Street. What is it? 500 Grant Street. Thank you. Hey, give me a handshake on that. All right, well, everybody, we got to wrap this up. And by the way, everybody, remember, uh, next month, it's open up a can of whoop butt on the assessments time. Remember that you and humanity and really, all forms of life really, really does, does matter. matter. started a religion some say he was a radical jew no doubt he taught us all by example of what our conscience says we should do like we want to be treated ourselves is the way to treat our sister and brother it's the key to human and civil rights yeah in the sum of all that matters